2010 may be seen by many as a year of recovery, but according to Mako Financial Markets, leaving interest rates too low for too long is one of the main concerns. Let's get through that with Laura Smith, fixed income trader at Mako Let's Financial Markets. Let's get the first question. How can yeah. you possibly old enough to remember that advert? <laughs> 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 I don't want to show my age. Either. It was in Remington, wasn't it? Yeah, it was indeed. And there are lots of other good razor makes out there. <laughs> Legal Go ahead, carry on, Not to too low for too long, biggest concern. Well, it just seems to be uh, coming through in the markets. I mean, well, obviously last week we heard from all the central banks um, in terms of G3. And obviously the market um, chose to look at certain words whenever they mentioned inflation. We, we see certain signs of panic. And I'm worried, particularly in, in the case of the bond market, um, particularly at the longer end of the curve, we've seen some very heavy pressure over the last week. Um, and essentially with all these treasury auctions to come as well, I just think the feeling is that there's a risk in the market that we could be seeing maybe potentially a bond collapse of some sort in the coming months. So I think definitely m traders are becoming very aware of that and they're on high alert to, to any signs of hawkishness at all. I, I'd be interested, you mentioned issuance, but I mean, uh, the, the other thing it seems to me is that there are rumours, or there began to be rumours last week of uh, uh, an Obama stimulus package number two. Mm -hmm. um, he's got a print money, you know, like it's going out of fashion, mm -hmm. that gold's through $1,100. Um, I just wonder whether the bond markets are suddenly realizing that they're going to call a halt to this uh, fiscal policy rather than inflation. Well, that's the thing. I mean, obviously, it calls for a second stimulus package. You know, we, we've had them before, and it has been rebuffed. If it comes along again now, I mean, already overnight you had China again urging the U.S. to do something about its deficits. You know, we're we just going to keep building the problem. Obviously, the dollar story is the big mover for all global markets. You know, every asset class you're looking at, it's having an impact. If we're going to see continuing weak dollar going forward, obviously commodities are going to continue their run. Equities will probably continue mm. their run at this stage. And I just feel that the bonds are the, really the ones that are very susceptible at this point. I think the thing to remember is this would be a third stimulus package, not a second, because there was a stimulus package at the end of the Bush administration, which everybody seems to forget. Yeah, I think that's, that's one true. point. Secondly, uh, indirect buyers, at least in the Treasury market, mm -hmm. and those that are t typically comprised of foreign central banks, mm -hmm. have had no issue with this whatsoever. They've bought up more mm -hmm. than the primary dealers in the United States at every auction for the last two or three mm -hmm. months. For me, it would seem the stresses might be more in the Eurozone bond market, particularly around the periphery with some of these mm -hmm. sponsors from Ireland, Portugal, Greece, Italy, etc. Definitely. I think, you know, in the case of Europe, you've very much got a two-tiered uh, yeah. system going on there and I think that's obviously something the ECB is very worried about. Now in terms of the topic that we're talking about here whether we, we could potentially see hikes next year you know a rate's going to be left too low for too long when you look at Europe that is definitely something that, that could keep the ECB from acting they may remove some of the liquidity that they, they hinted at last week I think that's almost accepted by the market now we're not going to see the LTROs going forward for one year um, next year however I think at the, at the end of the day their hand will be stayed from raising rates um, probably sooner than you might might expect, um, despite what Weber might say, yeah. simply because they are worried, obviously, about certain parts of the Eurozone. And obviously, when you look at the Euro where it is, it certainly wouldn't be the thing to help right now. But also, the Euro is not inflationary at this level. I mean, the, it's, it's uh, keeping up mm. with the oil price and yeah. various other inputs. So the, the, they're in a happy space, it seems yeah. to me, the ECB. And personally, after eight years in Frankfurt, I don't see any threat to the uh, sovereign debt markets of the little countries because Frankfurt will make sure the money appears um, in the uh, in the in the local central bank uh, exchequer, yeah, whereas I think yeah. it's not obvious to me yeah. outside Japan, yeah. who I think for different political reasons, as we know, is a big buyer of U.S. Treasuries now. I can't see any reason why anybody else has to buy U.S. Uh, Treasuries. From quick here. word on where we should put our money if we're interested in the derivative space on the back of. Uh, your premise? Well, I mean, basically, people are starting to look at steepening trades, obviously, going forward. Um, we've obviously seen a lot of activity in Treasury puts as well over the last week, potentially ahead of these auctions here. So big buyers of December 10-year puts, uh, 16 half strikes, 17 strikes. I think at the moment, um, the volatility in 10-year space is actually too expensive on the put side, and actually, boon puts look cheap on a, on a volatility case-by-case uh, -case scenario. So. Um, you believe we should be looking at yields as well, the, yeah. the right kind of yields in the equity market as well. Where does your bond scenario fit into this? Well, we, 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 we are concerned, um, I think, in the shorter term um, that uh, bonds are still in a trading range. I think if you look at the, the way I look at it as an equity guy, um, you, you sell the U.S. Treasury at 330, you buy it back at 4. We're kind of at 355, I think, at the moment. So we're, we're kind of like not sure what it's sending us, but I think the fact that it's, it looks like there's some momentum to the downside at the moment suggests that you'll get a better opportunity to buy, buy bonds back. 
um, simply because, as, as, as I've said to you before, we believe the economic prognosis of 2010 will disappoint equity investors. Uh, we've got to leave it there. Thank you very much indeed for joining us both. You. Laura, it's very nice to see you again as well. Laura Smith, fixed income trader at Mako Financial Markets. Neil, always good fun having you on Thank the show. You Thank you for the last two hours of your time. Neil Duane, Chief Investment Officer for Equities for Europe.